All right, we're going to look at the area of a rectangle and parallelogram, sort of a side by side here so you can see what's happening. If we consider this rectangle, we want to remember that area is all of the square area inside the rectangle. So we're talking all of this space in here. So when it's on a grid like this, it's actually really easy to see the area because we can actually just count blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. So we would say that area of this rectangle is twenty-four. But there's a faster way than to have to count blocks. So we look on this side of the rectangle and we should notice that it is length one, two, three, four, two, three, four. Mind you, you count spaces, not points. So the height of this rectangle is four. And we can do the same thing here for base. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we can say the base of this rectangle is six. And if you think about the relationship of four and six to what we know the area is 24, we can sort of quickly see here that it is multiplication. So we can say we have four rows of six, which is where we get the 24. Or we can say we have six columns of four. Regardless of how we think about that, we are just going to multiply base times height, and that's going to give us the area of our rectangle. So the area of a rectangle, the formula for that is just base times height. Now remember, a square is just a very special kind of rectangle. So it is also base times height. So if you wanted to see a quick little example of that, if I did a 2 by 2 square where it's 2 on all sides, it has an area of 1, 2, 3, 4 square units inside. So you can sort of see here that I could find the area by doing 2 times 2, which is 4. Or I could do another one that was a 3 by 3. So you can see 3 here on each side. And I can buy the area 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 square units. And so I would just need to multiply a base times a height. And so my area would be 3 times 3 because we have 3 rows of 3 or 3 columns of 3, however you want to think about that. Okay, so regardless here, my area of my rectangles and my squares to get the space inside is just going to be base times height. Now, a parallelogram, remember, is the general rectangle. Okay, so whatever is true about the rectangle must also be true about the parallelogram. If you remember, sort of like the chart where we did like the parallelogram had children and one of its children was a rectangle kind of thing. Okay. So if we're talking area, the thing that makes this a little harder is that if I want to count the inside space so that I can find the area of it, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But then this isn't really a whole one. 10, 11, 12, 13. This might not be a whole one. 14, 15, 16, 17. This might not be a whole one. And so we have this issue of these partial blocks on the sides. And so it turns out that this triangle is 2 by 1, 2, 3, 4. And this triangle is 2 by 1, 2, 3, 4. So, or maybe I could say 
it's not this outside piece, but this one right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, by 1, 2. So really, I could take this piece over here, right here, and flip it to over here, okay? And what I would end up with is actually this, just a rectangle, just like this one right here, okay? And so I would actually end up saying, okay, well, that's fine. That would be 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. But look at this guy right here. So actually, I would take this one out, and that would leave me with 24. So this is kind of why parallelogram and rectangle have the same formula. So I can do, okay, I know the area of a parallelogram, that's not a very good picture, is it, is also going to be base times height because they're basically the same picture, just a little bit, tiny bit rearranged, okay? So... If I did a couple of these for practice, and let's see. So in order to make my parallelogram here, I just went six this way, and I've gone two as my height. So that means when I draw my side length here, I want to go two, only two up as well. So I went one, two, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to go one, two, one, two, three, four, making sure that I keep my side lengths the same because it is a parallelogram, okay? And my height is just going to be this top part right here to the bottom. But really, it can be any any of these points, you're really just looking for what is this length or what is this height right here of the parallelogram. So in this case, it turns out it's 2. So if I wanted to find the area of this parallelogram, I would just take 6 times 2 and I would get 12 blocks. And they're kind of hard to count in this case, um, but it is indeed 12. Okay, and we could do one more. So parallelograms can be up and down like this, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to maybe go get myself a picture here of a parallelogram. So in this case right here, I would actually want to think about it turned sideways. So this is a nice thing about drawing and, and pictures and geometry is they don't necessarily have to be oriented exactly like you want them. So if it confuses you with the flat sides up and down, then just turn your paper. And you can see here this base right here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the height of the picture here is 1, 2, 3, so my height is 3, and my base is 5, so that means the area of this particular trapezoid, oh, excuse me, not trapezoid, parallelogram, is just 5 times 3, which is 15. Okay, hope that helps.